Difficult approaches and short landing runs are all in a day's work to the 146. Its ability to swoop down on tiny airfields at slow speeds and come to a halt in short distances is what makes the aircraft so well suited for flying into city centre airports. With full flaps down and speed brakes open, the 146 can descend at a 5.5 degree angle and still maintain a slow approach. It also has another trick. On touchdown, it sheds all its aerodynamic lift in an instant by using spoilers to destroy the smooth airflow over the wing surface. And a bonus for the thousands of people who live within earshot of the busy runway at this city centre airport, there's no noisy reverse thrust. It all helps make the 146 a good neighbour. But that wasn't the reason the aircraft was originally designed that way. The aircraft has no reverse thrust to make it simpler in operation and to counteract the effects of not having reverse thrust we have what are called lift spoilers on the wing which are large surfaces which on the ground we raise to give us a high retardation so that the combination of the flaps, the low speed approach and the spoilers give us a short landing run so the aerodynamics which made the 146 ideal for the third world have also enabled it to fly into the concrete jungles of today's cities. But operators also have another reason to like the 146. It's because it doesn't sound like this. Jet noise. It can make life a misery for anyone who lives near an airport or underneath a flight path. The noise comes partly from the turbine blades, compressing the air and forcing it into the combustion chambers, where it's mixed with fuel and ignited. The worst noise, though, comes from the hot exhaust, escaping through the rear turbines, turning at 20,000 revolutions a minute and blasting out of the rear of the engine. In Orange County, California, noisy operators found themselves outlawed by a very tough opponent, John Wayne. The John Wayne Airport imposed some of the most severe restrictions on aircraft noise that had ever been imposed anywhere, and they worked. The County of Orange has one of the most strict noise programs in the country and perhaps in the world. We have a, a very extensive uh, list of constraints and regulations and limitations that apply to aircraft operating here. Um, we have an extensive monitoring program of 14 monitoring stations on departure and three on arrival and we monitor noise for each and every arrival and departure and the carriers have to meet uh, single event as well as quarterly average noise limitations. We do have a curfew um, and in essence we have one of the quietest fleets operating here of any airport in the country. In response to powerful campaigning from people living near the airport, any jet exceeding sound levels of 89 and a half decibels was banned. When checks were carried out, the 146, even fully loaded, came well below the limits and is now one of the exclusive few able to operate from John Wayne Airport. In other countries too, airports are coming down hard on noise pollution. The new airport in Munich, Germany, has been built to satisfy environmental requirements. Its runways are aligned to ensure people living nearby have as little disturbance as possible. There are extensive noise monitoring systems all around the airport to ensure aircraft do not stray from their takeoff routes. Any that do are reported and traced. In Britain, Manchester Airport is another to tackle the noise problem. Every aircraft taking off is monitored by sensitive listening stations all around the airport. The results are fed back to a central computer, which logs the level of sound, the identity of the aircraft and its flight path. There are heavy fines for operators who don't obey the rules, an important sanction for an airport with plans to expand. We want to expand the airport because the airport's going to grow from around 15 million passengers today to around 30 million in 10 years' time. So we want to double the size of our business. And to handle that increased traffic, we want to develop a second runway. And obviously our neighbours are concerned about the impact that runway will have in terms of noise and new flight paths. So we have developed a series of guarantees, legally binding guarantees with our neighbours, where we've promised that noise levels in the future will actually go down and the numbers of people affected by noise levels around the airport will actually reduce. 
At London City Airport, the runway is almost surrounded by homes, high-rise apartments and residential property. Here, the solution to the problem of jet noise was simple. A total ban on all jets. The exception to the rule is the 146, and it's because of those quiet engines. Only about a fifth of the air going through the big fan at the front of the engine reaches the central core to emerge as hot high-speed exhaust gas. This is wrapped in a cocoon of slow-moving cold air, blanketing the noise. That's what makes the 146 a good neighbour, irrespective of whether it's taxiing or taking off. The 146's privileged status as the only jet allowed to operate out of London City is now being eyed with envy by other plane makers. The Dutch Fokker company believes its twin jets can also meet the noise and the performance requirements. Modifications will have to be made to the aerodynamics to achieve the same steep descent angle as the 146, but the battle of the city jets is underway. For now, though, London City is the preserve of the 146, and Captain Rice is about to begin his descent. We're now flying at 4,000 feet. We're established on the localizer for runway 28 at London City. We're center line. Descend at 3,000 feet further with the ILS 6354. Just been cleared to 3,000 feet on the QH. I'm now leaving 4,000, going down to 3,000. We're tracking with the Thames on our left. We'll be passing Tilbury very shortly. That warning sound was telling us we had 1,000 to go to our new altitude. Approaching the glide slope, we have two miles to run. I'm going to ask for flap to be selected. The flap is now travelling to 18 degrees. The noise you hear is the flap travelling. Now I want the gear down, so I'm going to. Captain Rice needs to know now is which way the wind is blowing at ground level. Clear to land 28, So we have 33018 gusting 29 is the wind, so we have quite a lot of drift. That crosswind gusting diagonally across the runway will make a smooth landing difficult. We're on the slope indicator. The autopilot is now disconnected. Plus 15, plus 10, plus 5. With 
full flap, the 146 lands at speeds much lower than conventional jet airliners and can easily come to a halt well within the 1,200 feet length of the runway. The British Aerospace 146 is an aircraft which has a special place in the affections of all its pilots. It'll be a sad day when I don't fly anymore, I don't fly the 146 anymore. But one day I'll have to hang my hat up, unfortunately. As for the future of the 146, that's taken another turn. A whole range of four new versions are now entering service all over the world. And the family now has a new name, or rather a distinguished old one harking back to the dawn of civil jet transport. Nearly half a century after the first flight of that pioneering regional jet, the Avro Jetliner, the name on the new breed is Avro, the RJ Avroliner.